dog's behavior, even as a trained dog, it it's because it's 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 wanting food, it's wanting shelter. So it's able to obtain food and shelter um, from the master, um, but it does not afford the dog to be able to actually take care of itself. And so when we think about education um, versus being trained in our school systems, are we being trained or are we being educated in the school system? Are our kids being trained or educated? They're being indoctrinated mostly. What do you think of episodic history versus holistic history in terms of education? Um, I, I would I would argue basically that the problem that we face as it relates to knowing um, our history is that our history is fractured by into episodes that are shaped or that are determined by episodes in European history. So, so for example, you'll hear people say, uh, we have ancient, feudal, and modern history, right? They say ancient African history, feudal African history, and modern African history, right? And I that's that's the way European history is broken up. So if we're coming from in in each one of those episodes in European history is determined or or it's it's marked by an achievement or or a group of achievements or you know something that happened in European history that they achieved for themselves so if they achieve things and mark their history with those points those demarcations in history and make episodes what we should be shaping and determining our history based on what we've achieved in our history. We shouldn't be shaping our history based on what others have achieved. You know, that's why the, 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 you know, the 1619 uh, year, that's a British perspective. That's a, that's a, that's the perspective of the pilgrims. We are not the pilgrims. You know, if you're thinking about 1492, we are not Christopher Columbus, you know, African people were here, you know, on the boat with Christopher Columbus, way before Christopher Columbus, and numerous times before Christopher Columbus. So why are we why are we using 1492 as the marker for understanding our history? It's because we're coming at it from the perspective of Christopher Columbus, you see, without recognizing that. So I think what we need to do is, you know, there are many people who've tried to undergo or try to, I guess you could say, create different periods of African history based on markers in our history that we've achieved. So, I mean, some of those people, I know Chancellor Williams in his book, The Destruction of Black Civilization, he outlines the way we should um, we should structure uh, our history, African history. Uh, I know Mal uh, Dr. Malefi Asante, he has his book, The History of Africa. Um, I know Milana Karenga has something where he tries his hand at it. I mean, there are there are many there are many African scholars who are writing African history mm -hmm. and encouraging others to write African history, but based on uh, the purview of African people and African achievements. So I think that's the way we need to approach it, and I think that would result in what the brother said when he was talking about a uh, holistic history, right? All right. So um, and so I want to get into the actual function. So the function of education. So um, in the chat, Inya was talking about the difference between being skilled, I'm sorry, and uh, Hannibal touched on this, but the difference between being um, trained and being educated. So um, again, Naeem Akbar says, people who are trained can only serve those educated people who were their trainers. And he talks about in the book, like the difference between the dog that is trained um, and then the the dog that is in its natural in in its natural state. So a dog that is trained, you know, putting on the dresses, dancing around, you know. But a dog that is um, the uh, educated, then that dog is able to defend itself against its enemies um, and its attackers. It's able to hunt. It's able to feed itself. And so that dog's behavior. Even as a trained dog, it it's because it's 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 wanting food, it's wanting shelter. So it's able to obtain food and shelter um, from the master, um, but it does not 
uh, for the dog to be able to actually take care of itself. And so when we think about education um, versus being trained in our school systems, are we being trained or are we being educated in the school system? Are our kids being trained or educated? They're being indoctrinated mostly. Indoctrinated, okay. Um, you know, two 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 primary functions come out of the uh, out of K through twelve uh, schooling: indoctrination, a little bit of education, but mostly indoctrination and socialization. And um, when I think of socialization. I'm thinking about it specifically in terms of how kids get along with their peers and how they learn to interact with people in authority, their teachers, the administrators, et cetera. And, and there's value in learning socialization, but only if it's in a loving and, and, and uh, non-exploitative environment. Our kids are definitely not being... The education takes a backseat to the training and the indoctrination. Um, I didn't, I don't think I really got educated by a school until I got into college. And even then it was very Eurocentric, but I did learn how to think critically and I learned how to problem solve uh, and I learned how to research and I learned about uh, statistically um, uh credible data and et cetera, et cetera. So there was a lot of good that came out of my time in college that was true education. Um, but a lot of us miss that. A lot of us miss that. I think that when you're fully educated, not only are you a critical thinker, but you're a problem solver, and you have the ability to learn and synthesize new information outside of academia. So the education should unlock your mind and all ultimately give you the ability to further educate yourself. Because there's a difference between reading information, taking in new information, and synthesizing it with your experience, with what you observe in the natural world, and being able to form conclusions that are that make sense, that are logical, rational, et cetera, et cetera. I c consider myself a bit of a philosopher. Um, I am big on episte epistemology, ontology, axiology. I wasn't exposed to any of these concepts in college because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't study philosophy. I didn't study anything that, that where that was relevant. Right. I developed an interest after I got out. And because I got some skills while I was in, at that damn school, I had a foundation by which to add to my knowledge base. Mm -hmm. In the absence of true education, I probably wouldn't have been able to, to integrate uh, epistemology and axiology and ontology and, and, and their um and, and their related notions into my current guiding philosophy and, and guiding pr principles. So, you know, I hope I was, you know, that to me, that's what true education is about. It's about enabling and empowering and giving you the tools by which to help yourself give, you know, and, and it should be, you know, rooted in, 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 because I was trained before I was educated, I was trained in the military. Mm -hmm. to do violence and to obey okay. orders mm -hmm. blindly you know the to the military point i was um when we were talking when the training question made me think of one of my grandfathers um one of my grandfathers was a montford point marine so that's the first uh unit of black marines mm -hmm. that were admit they were first they were the first black men that were able to join the marine corps the Mon they were trained at montford camp and you know, the thing is, the Marines are supposed to be the United States military most elite troops. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I don't have a prejudice for one or the other. I just repeating what I heard. So but the point I'm making is many of our people and not just in the military, maybe I should use a different example. Let's use Ben Carson. Right. Ben Carson is an extremely talented brain surgeon. 
highly skilled, right? But the thing is, he's been uh, extracted or alienated from his own history and culture. So all of those skills are being utilized to which ends or to whose ends. I'm not saying he, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's great. He saves people and he saved many people and that's a good thing. And, you know, but at the same time, the, you know, when Dr. John Howard Clark says, take what you do best and do it for your people, what happens is uh, your socialization and your education, what you know of yourself and what you know of your past and what you know of your people shape where you will use your skills. And, and oftentimes we are removed from the knowledge of how to relate to our own people and act effectively on our own behalf. So what happens is we get highly skilled in many of these institutions, but we often don't have the orientation or the ideology or maybe some of the other knowledge bases that we might need to implement these skills on behalf of our own people. So I think it's a combination of things um, as it relates to education in order to fix the problem. Um, I know, um, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say anymore. I'm going to leave it there. Okay. <laughs> so I hope y'all are sharing this. They are dropping so many jewels right now. So please share, subscribe, and like.